Today, we're going to explore the microcosmos that lives in a pond. We will dive deep into a world that cannot be seen with the human eye. This colorful organism is called Daphnia and lives in almost every garden pond. Daphnia is a genus of small planktonic crustaceans that are commonly known as water fleas. These tiny organisms are fascinating and play essential roles in aquatic ecosystems. Here are some interesting facts about Daphnia. Daphnia are typically small, ranging from 0.2 to 5 millimeters in size. They have a transparent exoskeleton, allowing for easy observation of internal organs under a microscope. Daphnia are known for their rapid reproductive rate, especially under favorable conditions. They can reproduce both sexually and asexually. During favorable conditions, they primarily reproduce asexually through parthenogenesis, producing genetically identical offspring. Daphnia are used as bioindicators in aquatic ecosystems. Changes in their population density, size, and behavior can signal environmental changes and pollution levels. Their sensitivity to environmental conditions makes them valuable in ecotoxicology studies. In response to adverse conditions, Daphnia can produce dormant eggs called resting eggs. These eggs can withstand harsh environmental conditions and hatch when conditions improve. Resting eggs contribute to the survival and dispersal of Daphnia populations. Daphnia species are found in freshwater habitats worldwide, including ponds, lakes, rivers, and even temporary water bodies. Daphnia occupy a crucial position in aquatic food chains. They serve as a primary food source for small fish and other aquatic organisms, transferring energy through the food web. Another very interesting and scary creature that can be found in every pond in the summer month is the mosquito larvae. Mosquito larvae, also known as wrigglers, are the aquatic immature stage of mosquitoes. They play a crucial role in the life cycle of mosquitoes and their development occurs in water. Here are some interesting facts about mosquito larvae. Mosquito larvae develop in various aquatic habitats, including standing water, ponds, marshes, puddles, and even artificial containers like bird baths and discarded tires. Mosquito larvae have specialized structures called siphons, or respiration tubes, at their tail end. These structures allow them to breathe air while hanging upside down at the water's surface. Mosquito larvae are filter feeders, primarily consuming microorganisms and organic debris in the water. They use hair-like structures called cilia to create currents that draw in food particles. Mosquito larvae undergo several molts as they grow. Molting is the process of shedding their exoskeleton to accommodate their increasing size. The larval stage consists of four instars separated by molts. After the larval stage, mosquitoes enter the pupal stage, which is also aquatic. The pupa is comma-shaped and is commonly known as a tumbler due to its tumbling motion in the water. Mosquito pupae do not feed during their aquatic stage. Instead, they focus on the transformation from larva to adult. Pupae have respiratory trumpets that they use to obtain oxygen from the air. The larval and pupal stages together typically last about seven to 14 days, depending on the mosquito species and environmental conditions. Mosquito larvae serve as a vital food source for various aquatic predators, including insects, amphibians, and fish. They contribute to the aquatic food chain. While mosquito larvae themselves 
are not vectors for diseases. The adult mosquitoes that emerge from the pupal stage can transmit diseases such as malaria, dengue fever, and Zika virus. Understanding and controlling mosquito larvae can be a crucial aspect of disease prevention. Certain organisms, such as dragonfly larvae, are natural predators of mosquito larvae and are used in biological control programs to reduce mosquito populations. Understanding the biology and ecology of mosquito larvae is essential for developing effective strategies to control mosquito populations and mitigate the spread of mosquito-borne diseases. I hope that you enjoyed my macro and micro videos and that you learned something interesting today. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss any future video about the macro cosmos. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you in my next video.